This is a touch TFT display and it is very easy to program and to use. I want to make my own digital power supply, one like this one, that could control voltage, current and display the power on the screen. A digital power supply has four main parts. A transformer that will lower the voltage from let's say 220 volts to around 30 volts. Then we have the rectifier that will give us DC values. And then we have a boost or a buck converter in order to be able to regulate the output value. But to control all this we need the final part, which is the front panel and for that I will use a TFT display. This video will be the first part of a long project where I will show you how to use this kind of Nixian display and create your own front panel design. I recently found this on the internet, so I bought one and I've learned how to use it. You can add buttons, labels, waves, scopes, control pictures and much more. And the best thing is that it's controlled with the word communication and the graphic platform is running inside of the TFT display chip, not on the Arduino. This is called a Nexion display and you could get one with a 2.4 inches size, 2.8, 3.5 and much more. In my case this one is a 2.4 one and has a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels. To create the TFT file we will use the provided software called Nexion Editor and then relate the graphic parts with the Arduino code. But before we start please, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB that offers the most economic prices for PCB services right now with only $2 for 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm. The finish of their PCB is very professional and high quality. So just upload the Gerber files to jlcpcb.com, select the thickness, the size, the quantity and so on and place your order for amazing prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is my Nextian display. This is an amazing product. It could have buttons, print graphs, pictures, have sliders and much more. So imagine the possibilities. But anyway, in this video I will make the front panel of a power supply. We will start with creating a new screen, add some buttons and send data to the Arduino. Then we will add a label to the screen and see how to receive data from the Arduino. Once that is done and we know more or less how to use the Nexian editor, we can start making our TFT file for the front panel of the power supply. So let's begin. First we need the Nexian display. A micro SD card of 8GB or less, 4 jump wires, 1 Arduino board and the Nexian editor software. Go below of this video and download this software and install it. Open the application and let's start with a new project. Ok so click file new and select the folder where you want to save your project. Give a name to the project. I will name this example two push buttons and click save. Now on this menu select the type of display that you are using. In my case is this one, the NX322402024-011. Select that and then go to the display tab. I want my menu to be horizontal, so select that option. Now click OK and let's start the project. This here in the middle is how the display will look. Here is the output of our compiler. Here we have the selected page and in this case we have just one. Later we will add more. Next we have the toolbox and the pictures. So let's give a background to our screen. For that, before in Photoshop I've created a new file with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels and I made this design. I saved the picture in a JPEG format with the name background1. Now in the Nexian editor, click this plus button and add that picture to the project. Now go to the toolbox and select picture. A new picture box was added to the screen. On this box on this corner we can change the attributes of the selected element, in this case the picture box is selected. Double click on the peak value. Here we can select the imported background and click OK. Now our screen has a background. It's time to add a simple button. Select button from the toolbox. I place this button on the left side of the screen. 
In the attributes panel, I change the color to green and the text to on with white color. But the button is still not showing any text. For that we need to create a new font. Click tools and select font generator. I give the name to this font as font1 and select a height of 24 and an aerial type. Now click generate font. Give a name to this font and save your file. Now on this box we have the fonts and as you can see we have one font on the zero position. So go back to the button attribute and select font0. Now the button works. Now let's make this button to do something. We have a press and release event. Do something when we touch the button or when we release it. I go to the press event and type print1. So when I will touch this button I will send a 1 through the serial port. Ok so now in the same way I make another button but with red color, off label and that will send a 0. Now click compile and see if you have any error. If not, go to file and open the build folder. Now copy this tft file. Go to the SD card and pass this file to the SD card. Be careful, the SD card must be empty and format it to a FAT32 format. Ok guys, so now make sure that the display is not powered. Insert the SD card in the display card slot. Now connect the screen to 5V and ground from the Arduino and plug the USB to the Arduino and power it up. You will get this message that the new TFT program is being copied to the display memory. Once finished, unplug the USB from the Arduino. Now remove the SD card from the display and power back the Arduino. And there you have it, this is our graphic panel for two buttons. Now open Arduino and let's see the code part. Ok, so we start with the serial communication. If we receive a 1, then we turn on the LED connected on digital pin 5. If we receive a 0, we turn off the LED. Ok, so upload this simple code to the Arduino and let's test it. I connect the LED with a resistor to digital pin 5 as in the code. And there you go, I can control the LED with the touch screen. Turn the LED on and turn it off just by pressing the screen. Ok guys, now let's see more examples. You could also use the debugger to test if your program works. In the software click debug. Now I can simulate what the screen would do. I click the on button and as you can see I send a 1. If I click off, as you can see I send a 0. Each command is followed by 3 full bytes every time. Ok, now let's see how to receive and display data from the Arduino. I create a new project and a new screen, and I add the background as before. But now, instead of a button I select number. That will add a new number block on the screen. I select the background color of this block to be grey, the text white and the same found zero that I've used before. I set the width and height of the block to 200 by 30 pixels just to show you an example. Now this is the important part. Go to the object name and give it a name. I will name this object voltage1. The val or the value of this object is now 0. All we have to do now is to send this line from the Arduino. Voltage1.val equal to and put the number that we want to display. If I open the debugger and type voltage1.val equal to 32 and press enter, the label changed to 32. So compile, put the TFT file to the SD card and copy the new file to the screen. When you remove the SD card and power it on, you will get the new screen like this. Now make these connections to the screen and a potentiometer to analog input A0. Now open Arduino and let's see the code. Once again we start the serial communication. In the void loop, we read the value of the potentiometer. Now I print to the serial communication this string, voltage1.val equal. Then I print the value of the potentiometer. Then I write 3 full bytes and that's it. Compile and upload the code. And there you go, I changed the value of the potentiometer and the new value is printed on the screen. In this case, the analog read is from 0 to 1024. So that's pretty easy, right? Ok, now we know the basics on how to write and read data from the display. On the Nexian editor we have much more tools. Let's add a new waveform to a new screen with no background, since we don't need that anymore. I will set the size of the waveform to 320 by 240 so it will fill the entire screen. 
Now keep in mind the ID of the waveform. In this case ID is equal to 1. So save the TFT file and upload it to the display. Now when you power it on you will get the waveform but with no data. So for that let's open the Arduino code. We start the serial communication. To give data to the wave we have to use this line. Add, space, the ID of the waveform, the channel of the waveform and then the value that we want to send. So I read the potentiometer once again and map its value from 0 to 255 since that is the maximum value for the waveform. I print add, then a space, then a 1 which is the ID of my waveform, then a comma and a 0 which is the first channel of the waveform, another comma and the value of the potentiometer read. Now write 3 full bytes and upload this code. And there you have it. I have the analog input value printed on the waveform now. I can detect the noise created by the surrounding and my body and also if I connect the potentiometer as in the other case I can get the value on the waveform. That's pretty cool right? Ok guys now for the final example I will show you how to change from page to page. So create a new project. As before I import the pictures for the background. In this case 2 pictures, one for each page. I add a background to the first page. Now go here to the page box and click the plus icon. Now I also have page 1. Now add a picture to the second page and select the second picture that we've imported. I select page 0 and I add a button like this with the label of next. In the press event you have to type page 1. In this way when this button is pressed we will go to page 1. Now select page 1. Add another button to this page that will say back. In the press event type page 0. And that's it. Run the debug and as you can see I can go from one page to the other. Imagine the possibilities of this. You could create multiple pages and make very complicated designs now that you know how to use it. Feel free to use all the other options from the toolbox. Below I will leave a link with all the functions for this display such as how to change the baud rate, how to print and much more. Read that for more details. Ok so this is my final design. I have two push buttons to go back and forth. One button to activate the power supply output. I have buttons to increase or decrease the set value for the voltage and current. Also I have these two arrows to set the decimal point of the value that I want to change. So pay attention, this display doesn't work with float values, only with string and integers. That's why here for example, I've divided the voltage value in 3 numbers. Voltage, voltage tens and voltage hundreds. Then I've created a timer that each 100 milliseconds will run this code. For example, if the value is 3.25 volts, I will send from the Arduino 325, which is integer. And in this code I divide that number into 3 numbers and by that I can display 3.25 instead of 325. Remember to define all variables globals, otherwise you will lose the values each time you will change the screen. And that's it, save the TFT file to the SD card and upload it to the display as before. You have all the TFT projects that we've made today below this video ready for download. You also have all the test codes for the Arduino. Ok so once you upload a new TFT file, unplug the Arduino and remove the SD card. Now connect the screen like this to the Arduino and add two potentiometers. Download and open the final code. Please read all the comments in the code for more details. But here's what I've done. I entered the set menu and put the voltage and current values. And only when I press back I send those values to the Arduino. I first send the B character then the values. That's why in the code when I receive the B character I save each of the 4th values since after each number we send we receive 3 full bytes as you remember. That's how I get the set voltage and the set current values. Next I read the potentiometers and set that values to the real voltage and current variables. In the final project this voltage read will be the real output from my power supply. And that's it, upload the code. Now I have the voltage read on the first label and on the waveform. I also have the current value and the power. I can activate or deactivate the output or enter the set menu. Here I can select the values and then when I click back those values will get stored onto the Arduino. Stay tuned for the next part of this project where I'll add the other parts of the digital power supply. If this video helps you make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. 
also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. Remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep these kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.